Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Becky and you probably already know that if you've already seen some of my videos. Um, but I just wanted to make this short little video to put as an intro to my channel at the top of my channel so that when you're visiting you can see what I'm about and what this channel is about and decide if you want to just pop in for a visit or if you want to stay for a while. First, I wanted to start out with the name of my channel, which is Geo Beck. If you've been here for a little while, you've probably noticed there's a theme um, that my, geo my videos are about mostly geology. This is because I am a geologist. I studied geology in college and I've always kind of been interested in rocks and the earth and how things work since I was little. Funny enough, I didn't actually realize I wanted to study geology until like my second year of college, even though it was like very obvious that that was what I was going to do based on like childhood memories and stuff. But anyway, the name comes from that, my love for geology and my love for wanting to share information that I learn, information that I know about Earth that excites me and interests me that I want to share with you. I also really like just connecting to the world around me through rocks, if that makes sense. So you may not have noticed or maybe you have noticed but a lot of things in our daily life are actually very connected to stones and rocks and minerals and the earth in general. I could name a bunch of examples, but just a few would be the minerals that we have in our house everywhere, like gypsum in the drywall or asbestos that isn't really used in things as much anymore, but nevertheless, some houses still have it, like my house has asbestos siding on the outside. Quartz and watches. These are just a few, very, just a very few examples that I can think of. But a few more exciting things that I like to share and learn about with rocks is how stones have been connected to human history in the past, so, or, and in the future, and in the present and future. So this can include, like, stone walls in New England and other places, or really old castles and the building materials that they're made out of, or building materials in New York City, like the video I just made about the Grand Central test stones, the stones that they used to test out how different rocks weather to decide which rocks they wanted to use in Grand Central Terminal. My drive to work, your drive to work, they're likely different unless you live in the same town as me and go to the same town for work, but even something as simple as that depends on geologic events that happened millions of years ago or thousands of years ago. For example, I live in an area where there's really old mountains that used to be really tall and they weathered away. And when I drive to work, I can see where those weathered sediments went and how they turned into different mountains in a different way than those old mountains. Or when I drive over hills, I know that a lot of these hills were put there when glaciers left thousands of years ago. So these are just a few like really fun, exciting ways that I can see the world because of information that I learned from awesome professors in college or other people that I connected with in college. I also wanted to share just why I like making videos and sharing knowledge with you in general. I think I'm always searching for this feeling that I get when I learn something new that changes my perspective on the world. Um, I think a lot of us can relate to that as having this feeling a lot when we are children and kind of just like experiencing all these new things in the world around us. Every day we were experiencing something brand new that we never knew about before or experienced before. And obviously as humans we go through, we go about our lives and we always are experiencing new things, but when we're children, we kind of look at it with this openness and love and curiosity that we, some of us might lose it a little bit when we're older and we kind of forget about what that feels like to have that feeling all the time. But when I studied geology, I noticed that feeling coming back a lot and it was really fun and refreshing to have like my world opened up again, if that makes sense. Um, if you have studied something that you felt the same way about, whether it be biology or music or writing, literature, history, archaeology, anthropology, this topic is, a, is different for everyone. Not everyone's going to feel this way about geology the way that I feel about it, but I think everyone has this like conduit that brings them back to that feeling that they had when they were a kid of the astonishment and love and curiosity and wonder about the world around them. And 
that's one of my favorite things about learning but also teaching feeling that feeling myself and then wanting to expand on it and share it with other people and then passing that knowledge on to someone and seeing something click in their head i don't know just like seeing seeing the window open up in their brain the way that it did for me when i learned that fact yeah i guess think about it as like a door or a window or a spark where you kind of feel that feeling of like you just want to learn more <laughs> let me think of an example um so i have a friend who's an ecologist and I watched one of her virtual classes last spring about tree identification and I never learned too much about trees or plants that much when I studied geology because we were focusing on rocks a lot of the time. There's obviously like, it's a multidisciplinary thing, geology, so we did learn about other things but not too much in depth. So I met this person who's an ecologist and she taught a class about trees and how you can identify a lot of trees based on looking at their bark especially in the winter when there's not really leaves to look at or you can't really like get high enough into the tree to look at the leaf up close. And during this class, she also taught us something, a term called marcescence, which if you study plants, you probably already know this term, but this was a brand new term to me until last spring when I looked at this class. Marcescence, a marcescent tree, is pretty much a tree that keeps its leaves in the winter while all the other trees lose pretty much all their leaves. And this is especially common in the American beech tree and also in some oak trees. So when I learned this, I had never thought about it before. It hadn't even crossed my mind. It was like one of those things that when you're driving along in the winter, or you're even on a hike in the winter, you kind of like notice these things around you, but unless someone is there to like point it out to you and why it is that way, you're not really gonna think twice about it. So when I learned this, I was just like, that's so cool. Like not only are there are trees that do this and they kind of do it on purpose. Knowing that there was like a word for this very specific thing that happens in nature was just so cool to me and it helped even more that it was like a really pretty word. So that alone was a really cool experience and it opened up that window in my head that I was telling you about. Um, so I had that knowledge in my head and then later down the road over the summer I was with a friend at a farmer's market and they ran into their friend that they, they kind of knew, but she teaches about plants. She also is an artist, which I find is common in the scientific community a lot of the time. Scientists are also really creative people and make really beautiful art. We ran into this person and I'm looking at her art and I see this one picture of an American beech tree that she made. And I was like, oh my god, that's a marcescent tree, right? Like that's, that's a, an American beach because it's marcescent. And she was like, yeah, that is just one really fun example of sharing this knowledge and having your world open up just a tiny bit with, with each little chunk of information. Chunk is kind of a weird word to use for that. With each little piece of information that we pick up along the way as we're going about our lives. Another example of this from the other point of view is when I've seen my interaction with someone lead to a similar experience for them. So this person I'm friends with who's an ecologist, I tell her about rocks all the time and she tells me about plants. We went on a hike somewhere where I, where we kind of just like stopped every five seconds and told each other about something we saw. So for me, I'd be like, look at this rock. And I would tell her about the rock. And then she would stop and we would see a tree or we would see like a certain bug on a tree and she would explain how it's like an invasive species. So I told her something very specific about the rocks in this location and how there are garnets in the rock and what that means for how it formed. And then she later did an educational walk with these students and she was doing a walk to, to teach them about like the plants and stuff and the ecology and just the general nature on that hike. And because of our walk earlier, she knew this new fact about garnets. And then she was able to pass on that fact to these students. 
and she showed me a picture of them looking at the rocks and pointing at the garnets and it just made me so happy. I could probably think of like a lot of other examples of this sort of interaction and my favorite thing about it is that it's always a unique interaction but there's always the same feeling for me. You might not necessarily be that interested in geology or you might not have ever thought about being interested in geology or rocks but you might get this same feeling with something else like maybe you create music or you paint or you're a photographer or you write or do stand-up comedy knit or whatever whatever gives you that feeling of connection to the world around you and to other people and excitement curiosity and just kind of like going back to that feeling that we all have had as children that is my goal with this channel so let me know if if it's working <laughs> I just love how many opportunities there are in life to experience this feeling and to share it with others. So that's what I'm trying to do here and if that sounds fun to you and interesting then please stick around and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. I just looked over at the bird feeder that's been hanging in the window near the window in our kitchen for literally a month and I saw one chickadee go, to, go up to it like two weeks ago but nothing since then and I just saw a bird go up to it oh my god I think it's a blue jay as soon as I like set up my camera and everything and started recording I look over into the window and there's the birds on the bird feeder I'm gonna go quick try to like identify what these birds are, but I have to be like really sneaky.